have uh, Luigi walking in both directions. There's a tiny lag when he turns around or he kind of glides in that direction before he starts um, changing his animation. So it's not perfect, and this is honestly all he does right now. Um, there's a lot more that he can do. So in the upper left corner, you can see that uh, there's a bunch of different poses and expressions that he has right here. And what I've done is I've cut out a rectangular piece of a bigger image and displayed it up in this left-hand corner. And what's nice is that you can take the individual cutouts, basically, and string them together into a little animation. And that's what I've done in the center of the screen. Right? So I've got him walking left, and I've got him walking right. And I'm just using the arrow keys for that. You can change it to the WASD keys if you want at some point. I'm going to share all this code with everybody as well. Um, so, well, how do I do this, and where is it all coming from? So first, let's check out the sprite sheet that I'm using. All right, so this is the sprite sheet that I have. It's just a rectangular image, and if I zoom in, all right, we can see there's just a bunch of these Luigi images, lots of different things that he can do. And like I said, I'm just using, I think the, uh, you know, I think I'm only even using these walk to the right images, and then I just reverse them to have him walk to the left. There's lots of other uh, things that he can do. And it's really helpful when you're trying to create some sort of animation to have these images aligned, spaced evenly and aligned along a grid. So they're in their rows and columns. That's gonna be like essential for what I'm showing you today in terms of cutting them out and stringing them together. The first thing is where I say pygame.image.load and then an image name. And you actually don't need the convert right here, right? I'll get rid of that. Um, supposedly it makes things more efficient. Like here's the game again, right? It still works exactly, or the program. It works exactly as before. Supposedly the, the dot convert that I had right there makes it like more efficient. Um, I've, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I've never noticed the issue one way or the other. So I load in the image and I put that in a variable. This is, this is a holdover. I named it sheet. That's probably not the name I want. Um, it's not essential either way. So I, I load the image into a variable. I could just draw this image and it would be the whole Luigi image that I had up on the screen earlier with all his different uh, poses and expressions and things. But if instead of just drawing this image, I grab a, I create a rectangle, pygame.rect. So this is the X coordinate, Y coordinate, uh, width and height. And I, and I call it a, you know random image here because I just made up these numbers. They're not particularly meaningful. What I can do is I can cut out a piece of that bigger image. And so again, just running it real quick here, what we're seeing in the upper left corner is a cutout from that bigger image. And that's really important because I wanna be able to cut out these individual uh, images and then string them together to make this little animation. This is just a demo of cutting out a random rectangle. So I have rect right there. And then here is the function that does all the hard work in this program, subsurface. And the way you call it is you have a variable that contains an image and you say image.subsurface and you pass in a rectangle. And what you're gonna get back is a new image that is a cutout of this image. So the image that's in the variable named image we're gonna cut out, we're gonna get a subsurface based on this rectangle. So basically indented by this X amount, indented by this Y amount, and then with width and height 200, we're gonna cut out that square and we're gonna put that image that we get into a variable named random image. So then if I scroll down, I use blit. This is just how I draw images on the screen. You've seen this before, but maybe you need a reminder. So whatever my variable is for my screen, I just say screen.blit. I say the name of the image, and then I say the location that I want it at, right? If I want this X value further to the right, I could change it to 300, and now the image is kind of in the middle of my screen or somewhere like that, right? So X, Y coordinate is just like where I want it to display on the screen there, so I can change that very easily. So that's the basics, right? If you want to start cutting out images from uh, a sprite sheet, and a sprite sheet, that just means you know, a, an image that has all these little um, sub images on them, these little sprites. If you want to start doing that, that's all you need, right? Here's how to draw an image on the screen. Let me go back up. Here's subsurface is the way to cut out particular images. Now, if we want to do this in a more organized fashion, well, organization, we should probably use some sort of function. 
And I have, I'm looking up here, I got a few functions. So strip from sheet is the function that I use. And I, I say where I got my image from or my images from. I actually, I actually grabbed a lot of this code from somewhere else. I should have cited that source. I think I do elsewhere, but I lost track of it. Maybe it's at the top? No. Oh, I just made a note to myself. Yeah, if you're looking for a good search term for these sprite sheets, what you really want to include is grid aligned sprite sheet. Because if it's just a bunch of sprites like scattered randomly over it, it's going to be really hard. You'll have to cut them all out manually. You'll have to specify the X, Y coordinates and the width and height of every single one of those individually. And that's, that's just not very fun. So strip from sheet is my function. And this is a really handy thing. So I grab the image, the, the sheet of images, like the one that has a bunch of images on it. R here is where I'm getting the rectangle. That is, this just, so the X and Y coordinates of this are going to be zero, zero. And this is just telling me what is the width and height of my image. So that's kind of a nice thing, by the way. If you have an image, you can figure out the width and height by uh, using getRect. I type in the number of rows and columns that I have. And this is really, this is where the, the fun starts because if I can just count up the number of rows and columns, I can automatically cut out each and every one of these images, right? We're in a programming class. We don't want to do boring, repetitive stuff. That's what the computer's for. Now this image width variable right here is actually the width of one of the individual Luigi's. Now I've calculated the width and height of just one of these images. Not the width and height of the whole thing, but just of one of the, the individual little guys there. All right, so I calculate those. And the way I do it is I get the width of the whole image. By the way, if you just put W here, it's, it's the same as typing out width. So the width of the whole image divided by the number of columns that they're gonna be. Take the height, divide by the number of rows that they're gonna be. So this gives me the, the height and width of those individual images that I want. All right, from there, well, I create a list named frames. So this is gonna contain all of my little tiny sub images. I loop over the rows. I loop over the columns right, for row and row and range rows or call and range columns. And I start creating these rectangles. And these rectangles are gonna be, they're gonna tell subsurface what I want to cut out from that bigger image. And the way I do this is I say, well, the X value is gonna be what column I'm currently on times the image width. The Y value is the row I'm currently on times the image height. And then what's the width and height? Well, it's, it's the width and it's the height. So then I append to my list a cutout from that bigger image. And the cutout is based on rectangle. So this is actually a, a, a workhorse of a piece of code right here, right? This is cutting out all the images that I want. Um, this next part is not even really that essential, right? All I'm doing is I'm duplicating every single one of those images with a transform.flip so that I also have it facing to the left. I think if I go back to the image, or well, some of them are facing to the left, some of them are facing to the right, but there's no duplicates in here. Or I mean, there's no like, like when we look at Luigi running to the right here, you can't find an image of Luigi running to the left. He's like stepping or kicking right here to the left, but he's not running. So, and there's no stepping or kicking to the right, right? So each of these only faces one direction. So if I want both directions, I do that next part that I'm showing you. I do this right here. So again, I loop over all the rows, I loop over all the columns. And what I do is I cut out the exact same rectangle and I cut out the exact same sub image from the sheet, but then I call this pygame.transform.flip. And this is just a handy function that's gonna flip an image. And you have a true or false right, and, and false right here. So this is saying true, flip it over the horizontal, flip it horizontally, so left to right. If you make this true, it will flip it vertically. So you can do vertical flips or horizontal flips, whichever you like, just based on whether these are true or false. And if you forget this or it's confusing or whatever, just Google pygame.transform.flip, like, and you'll find good information about how to use this. And then finally, my function just returns my list of all these images. So even though you saw in my program where like I have Luigi doing minimal things, he walks left, he walks right, and then he idles and that's it. Um, I actually have all the images loaded. So the only extra thing to do is to write the code that actually says, okay, well, these are the sequence of images that I want you to run. So let's look briefly at the controls and then, oh, actually, before we do that, 
So scaling. Scaling is a really useful thing too. Actually, all this code right here is where I go ahead and scale up or down all of my Luigi images. For example, I want Luigi to be much larger. I make the scaling five instead of two. Now I have a big old Luigi on the middle of my screen. He's very pixelated because that's how these things, you know, that's how it is in the image sheet. He's not meant to be that big. If I scale him down to one, this is actually exactly the size that he is in the sprite sheet. You can see it actually looks um, not pixelated, right? Because it's a fairly detailed at that size. So let's put that back up to two. I think two is a reasonable scaling. And so what exactly am I doing here? So first of all, I'm getting an example rectangle and I just grab one of the images from this list, right? All the frames. It doesn't matter that I grab bracket zero. I could grab any of them. I just know that there's at least one image in there. So I just grab the first one. I get the rectangle. The reason I want the rectangle and I named it dimensions is because I'm trying to use the width and the height and I'm trying to modify those widths and heights consistently, right? I don't want Luigi to be like stretched in one direction. If you do want Luigi to be stretched in one direction, let's make a really tall skinny Luigi. I won't multiply the width, I'll just multiply the height. So when I run this, now I have a really tall skinny Luigi and it looks very strange, but there it is. It looks like I'm, I feel like cross-eyed when I'm looking at that. Okay, so I multiply both the width. So here's the height multiplied by the scaling. And I'm also gonna multiply the width by the scaling. And that's gonna give me a, a new set of dimensions, a new width and height. That's five times my old width and height because I'm literally multiplying the old width by five and the old height by five. And then I just loop over every single one of my images and I use transform again but instead of transform.flip, I use transform.scale. I give it the image that I want to change the scale of, and I give it the dimensions, which is just a pair of widths and heights in parentheses, right? It's width comma height in parentheses, and that's my dimensions. So how do I actually do the animation? Well, I use a class that I named animated sprite. I pass it the screen that I want to draw on, the X and Y coordinate to start, and the list of images. So let's go look at animated sprite. So here's animated sprite right here. Like I said, takes the image, the screen to draw on X and Y coordinate and frames. And then I create some additional variables. I create an index. So frames is a list and I wanna know which image that I'm gonna be drawing in what sequence. So index tells me what image I'm like currently using in the sequence. I get a rectangle for that image, right? Self.frames is a list of images. I use self.index to get a particular image out. And then I use that get rect function again. So now I have a rectangle that has the width and height of the image that I'm using. And then I have this self.dwell countdown equals dwell. And dwell is just a constant that I defined up here. And like I commented, it's the number of frames to spend on each image. If I make this one, you'll see that I cycle between the images like really fast. And I like, first of all, his idle animation is super twitchy. He doesn't very, look very calm or idle. And then if he starts to move, I mean, that's actually kind of fun. He's got this like Scooby-Doo motion to his legs where they seem to spin and he doesn't move very far. Um, but I felt that that was kind of weird. And certainly the like relax animation is just way too twitchy for me. Um, so I just said five frames. I'm just gonna delay everything. I'm gonna hold everything on the screen for five frames before I move onwards. Um, you're gonna see these in just a second. So I might as well tell you what they are, All right? Frame set start and frame set end. So. These are just like the frames that I decided I wanted in my sequence. So I just said, um, you know, I want to start actually at zero and I want to end at zero plus two. Those are the images, those, those are the frames that I want to cycle through. All right, so these variables I'm using to say, I'm starting at whatever particular frame this number is, that index into that frames list. And I'm ending at this one. And then I'm going to reset back to the start and just repeat. I have a few more variables down here where I just wanted to keep track of, okay, well, what frame actually, what image actually starts with running to the right and which one starts with running to the left? Well, running right starts at two, running left starts at 20, idle right starts at 29, idle left starts at 11. So this is just idle facing right, idle facing left, running facing right, running facing left. These are just indexes into, indices into my list of images. And I had to figure out these by hand, right? I just went to that image which I closed again, unfortunately. I just went to this image and I just counted. Like, and I got over to this one right here and I was like, oh, this is the sequence where he's running to the right. Great. All right, back to our class called Animated Sprite. 
right? Take some basic stuff that you'd want for any sprite, what to draw on, X, Y location, images. Gets this index that it's going to use to figure out what image it's on and sets its dwell count to dwell. And for this one, the real workhorse, it's only got these three functions, including the constructor. So only two functions other than the constructor. An advanced image is the one that you really want to pay attention to. So actually, let's just deal with draw real quick. It just screen.blit. I draw the image at self.index, right? So I index into the list of images. I draw that particular image. And then this is just the X and Y coordinate to draw at. And it looks a little complicated, but I wanted my um, X, Y coordinate to be the middle of my image. That just makes a lot more sense to me. It's easier for me to keep track of. So, but the drawing always occurs from the upper left corner. So if I subtract half of the width of my image and I subtract half of the height of my image, that'll move me from the center to the upper left corner for drawing. So my X and Y coordinates will always be the middle of my image, but I need to draw from the upper left corner. So I do these right here to do that. All right, but that's a pretty basic draw function. So advanced image is what we really want to deal with here. So we decrease the dwell countdown. So we're apparently, we're supposedly displaying one of our frames. So we're done with that. We should decrease the dwell, so we're ready to move on. If the dwell countdown is less than zero, well then we're going to reset the dwell countdown back to whatever dwell is, in this case, five frames. And we're going to increase the index. We're going to move on to the next image. And now this math looks a little bit complicated, probably only because the percent sign. Remember percent sign is divide, but give me the remainder. And the reason this is important is because if we want to count through images zero through two, we want to go zero, one, two, and then we want to repeat. The modulus is what lets us do this. That's the percent sign that lets us do this. What we'll say is, Whatever the frame set end is, we'll add one. So if I want to go through images that are indexed by zero through two, frame set end is going to be two, and I'll add one to get three. So I'll say index zero. We'll start there. If I divide it by three, I still get zero. I'll increase the index by one. So now I'm at index one. One divided by three, the remainder is still one. Right? I wasn't able to divide it at all. I'm just left totally with remainder. I increase index by one again, so now I'm at two. I divide by three. Well, the entire remainder is two, so I stay at two. I increase the index to three. I divide by three. The remainder is zero. I actually reset back to zero. So this right here is super handy if you're ever looping through a list. You probably want to use modulus because whenever you increase, if you then check the modulus against the length of your list or the length that you want in this case, you're going to eventually get back to zero. And then finally, if for some reason the index is less than the frame set start, we just set the index equal to the frame set start. This part right here, this line with the modulus keeps us from going too far to frames, to images that we don't want in our frames list. And this if statement right here makes us, prevents us from going too low to images below our, our set start. There's other ways to check it and do this, but that's, that's what I did here. So advanced image is cycling us through the images. And then uh, we just call the sprites draw function, right? Here's all the drawing right here. I've got some controls right here, a whole bunch I don't even use. Up and down keys are in here, but I'm not using them. And then, yeah, I'm just doing event handling. I check for key pressed right here. And the key pressed is just changing my speed, moving my, my sprite left and right. Um, speed is just a variable I defined at the top. And yeah, that's it.